Here's a newly acquired flea market find, a Sears Silvertone Model 5 uh, AM 5 tube radio from circa 1951-52. I picked this up for $10 at the flea market this morning. And it looks like it'll clean up pretty well. It's got a good bit of dust and dirt and crud on it, but no visible cracks or anything. The only real problem is the dial pointer is broken, which I already have some ads placed on the various antique radio sites trying to find one. If I can't find one, I'll just have to manufacture something. This is an Arvin built set which Arvin made a lot of radios for Sears. There's the back of it. Even the back's still in decent shape. And it's obvious that someone spliced a power cord onto the on what's left of the original and when the radio didn't work they pulled the cord off. Or when the radio went up in smoke they pulled the cord off. But without any further delay let's, let's pull it apart and see if we can make it play this afternoon. And here's the chassis removed from the cabinet. As I eyeball this, I see that one tube is missing. The chassis is extremely filthy dirty. There's a broken wire that goes to the loop antenna. The speaker voice call is dragging. Can't tell, can't tell that any many repairs were made under the chassis. Looks pretty much original. And this set uses the style of IF transformer that's bad about having the silver migration disease. Hopefully that won't be the case with these, but if it is, we'll have no choice but to deal with it. Okay, all I know to do at this point is get started on it. Okay, I've now removed a good bit of the crud that was on the chassis. Yeah, that looks a lot better now, doesn't it? And looking under the chassis a little closer, we can tell that this capacitor is blown up. This looks like the capacitor that's wired across the AC power line. And it was very common for these to blow up, so... And technically, you want to replace them with a modern AC rated safety cap although if all you have available is a standard film cap that'll still be superior to these old paper capacitors that were originally used in this application okay for the exception of the blown apart across the line capacitor here I have all the rest of them replaced as you can see here here is the original three section filter capacitor that's a total dud. I replaced that with three individual modern capacitors. The original capacitor was was a uh, 40 microfarad, 20 microfarad, and 20 microfarad at 150 volts. I went with a 47 microfarad and two 33 microfarads to replace the original 20 microfarad, that, that won't hurt a thing. And the reason I haven't replaced this capacitor yet is because one end of it ties to the 35W4 rectifier tube, the uh, AC power cord, as well as a surge resistor that's out of tolerance. It's connected to that pin, so I want to go ahead and replace everything while I have that unsoldered. That surge resistor is supposed to be 15 ohms. It's up to 39 ohms, which is more than twice what it should be. So that will have to be replaced. But yeah, it's, it's coming along nicely. And by the way, this little device here with several leads coming out of it, that's known as a couplet. And it's, a, it's the forerunner of the modern integrated circuit. What this device is, it's in the audio circuit. Its purpose is to couple the first audio stage to the output tube. And there are several resistors and capacitors inside of this little device. They don't fail that often, but 
I've seen it happen once or twice in the 20-something years I've been doing this. But fortunately, they generally give the values of the parts inside of these little devices on the, in the schematic. So if these do fail, you can generally build one without too much trouble, given the values posted on the schematic. Okay, now we'll replace this surge resistor, the AC power cord, and this blown apart capacitor here. And here's something here. I don't really like the way they did this. You notice they have the power cord sort of crimped to the chassis here. That was done from the factory to offer a little bit better strain relief than just tying a knot in the power cord. Well, that's all fine and good, but if this insulation were to become brittle or cracked or frayed or any other condition that would cause the copper wire to be exposed, well, you get the idea. You've got a dead short to the chassis, which is something we don't want. So when I replace this power cord with a new one, I may still use this feature here, but I will put a couple of layers of heat shrink tubing over the, the uh, new power cord to prevent any possibility of insulation damage which could lead to a short circuit and you can see they did the same thing to the other side of the power cord so if the insulation were to become compromised under both of these areas where it's crimped down then you have a dead short on your hands that would uh, could cause a problem it would be a little 4th of July, to say the least. Okay, we now, ha now have all the capacitors and the AC line cord replaced. I didn't have the correct 0 .047 microfarad line bypass capacitor, so I just made one out of capacitors I had on hand. And yeah, I know it would look better with a brown power cord, but this is what I had, so this is what we used. And I misspoke earlier about this resistor. I thought it was a 15 ohm, but when I got it out in a position where I could really see it, I discovered it was actually 150 ohm, and it's okay. So, you know, that's fine and dandy. One less part I have to replace. It makes me happy. Okay, I have it powered up and turned on. Obviously, I don't have the loop antenna connected yet, but I just wanted to see where we are at this point and only have about 70 volts AC input and what I'm hearing is not a good sign at all yeah that sounds just exactly like a uh, silver migration disease of the IF transformers so if that's the case that means we're going to have to uh, take these IF transformers out and rip out the uh, built-in mica capacitor and solder a couple of outboard silver mica capacitors to the transformer. It's not something I'm looking forward to doing, but if this radio is ever going to live again, it's going to have to be done. Yes, our IF transformer is bad. Now, mind you, I'm only running at about half line voltage. On the output transformer here is 36 volts on the primary side, which that's normal. On the secondary side, 21 volts. So yeah, that transformer is major leaky. And you can see it fluctuating. Yeah, the next order of business is to pull this IF transformer out and disable the internal capacitor and mount a couple of silver micas across the terminals here outboard to the transformer and we'll probably do the same thing to the first one.